Episode 4, Bad Guys Always Win. Flashback to three months ago. We see Dave sitting by a campfire. We see him eating beans and reading a book. We then see a woman come out of the woods and she looks very scared and says, Hi. Dave clicks his gun and she says, Sorry, I, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just looking for some food and I saw your camp. Dave asks, Anybody with you? The woman swears that there's not and Dave lowers his gun and checks her for weapons, but he doesn't find any weapons on her and he looks suspicious and tells her, Look, I've been through hell the last few days and I don't want any trouble, but if you're hiding something, this won't end well for you. You understand? The girl says she understands and Dave says, Well, sit down. I'll give you something to eat. Don't say a word, fill your stomach, and after that, I want you gone. She sits down and starts eating rather quickly, and Dave notices that, and she asks, So what's your name? Dave says, What did I just say about not talking? The woman says, Sorry, if you're not going to talk, then I will. My name's Catherine. I was a waitress at a truck stop diner. I didn't make all that much money, but money's money. Dave has a small smile because he hasn't talked to someone in a while, and Catherine says, Thanks for the food. You're the first person that I've met that didn't try to kill me in a while. Dave says, My name's Dave. Catherine says, And how long you been out here, Dave? Dave lies and says, Since the world's gone mad. And Catherine says, Were you a dad? You have any kids? Dave doesn't answer and says, All right, sweetie, you're going to have to get going now. Catherine says, All right, well, thanks for not killing me. And she leaves, and Dave goes right back to reading his book. Ten minutes later. Catherine comes back to the camp, and Dave pulls out his gun and says, I thought I told you I want to be left the hell alone. Catherine looks scared and says, this wasn't my choice. I'm sorry. Dave turns around and a man comes out of the bushes and knocks him out. Three hours after Lincoln's group met up with Dave. We see Lincoln, Tom, Sidney, Kezia, and Luke all sitting in a room guarded by soldiers, and Tom gets up and says, What the hell are we being held here for? Huh? The soldier says, Sir, please just take a seat. Our leader will be speaking to you soon. And Kezia says, Yeah, we've been sitting here for over an hour waiting. And the soldier says, Mr. Miller, ma'am, is a very busy man. And Tom says, yeah, he's a busy man, all right. And Lincoln says, all right, that's enough. And then we see Dave walk into the room and one of his soldiers grabs a chair for him to sit in. And we notice that they treat him like royalty. And Dave sits down and says, sorry for the wait, but my people and me have been tracking down the Vipers for the last couple of months. For the record, you were right about what you said, Mr. West. There is more of them out there. Things have changed and not for the better, I'm afraid. And Tom says, yeah, things are gonna change if you don't let us out. Dave says, all right, you want to play that game, do you? Let's get one thing straight here. I worked with you people in order to get out of the nightmare that the Vipers made us live through every day. I fell in line and fought for you people, and I don't need to thank you. But let's get one thing straight here. As long as you're in here, I'm in charge. And he looks directly at Tom and Kezia when he says this, and he tells the soldiers, take Sydney, Tom, Luke, and Kezia to a place where they can stay for the night, gentlemen. I'll talk to Mr. West on my own. And he and Lincoln leave the building, and Dave takes Lincoln somewhere to talk as Tom sees him walking away and looks afraid for his brother. We then see as Dave is taking him somewhere, Lincoln is walking through this town that Dave has lit up at night and Lincoln looks amazed by how big this place is. One of the guards asks Dave as they're walking by, Hey boss, who's this guy? 
Dave says, Derek, this is Lincoln West. He's part of that new group we took in earlier today. And Derek and Lincoln shake hands and Derek says, well, it's great to meet you, Mr. West. Just by curiosity, were you in the military before by chance? I feel like I've seen you somewhere. Lincoln says, no, although I was a prison guard for several years. And Derek says, well, hey, that's the kind of person we could use around here. And Lincoln thanks him and Derek says, well, it was nice meeting you. And Lincoln says, likewise. And Lincoln and Dave keep walking through the town. We see Dave pouring he and Lincoln a glass of whiskey, and we see them sitting in Dave's little apartment that he has, and Lincoln says, I must say it's pretty impressive what you built here and all, but when are we going to cut the bullshit and talk? And Dave says, well, if you want, I can call you a cock-sucking, piece-of-shit, motherfucking dickhead son of a bitch, just to even things out a little bit. And Lincoln kind of laughs and says, so what's going on here with my people? Dave says, relax. It's like I told you a few months back. As long as your people follow the rules and contribute, that we shouldn't have a problem. They're all getting places to stay as we speak. And the only way this turns into a problem is if anybody makes it hard. Lincoln says, well, we already have a home. Dave asks, the old base? Lincoln says, nah, we found a ranch. We all took it over after the war with Chris. And Dave says, well, at least you can get to stay here for the night. Lincoln thanks him and Dave says, but you're responsible for your people. If anyone wants to try something, you're responsible, all right? Lincoln says, of course. I don't want to start anything old here. And Dave takes a sip of his drink and says, neither do I, so we won't. And Lincoln looks around and asks Dave, so tell me, how'd you end up here? Dave looks at him and says, well, we might as well start from the beginning. Flashback to three months ago. Dave has a bag on his head and he's walking through the woods and he's held hostage by four soldiers. Dave can hear them talking and the lead soldier named Owen is saying, this was good. The guy had a few good canned goods. It's not much, but it's enough to show for our trip. We hear Catherine say, please, you, would you just listen to me? He wasn't harming anyone. He was minding his own business. Owen says, I let you come out on this hunt because you said you were ready. You said you were going to split off and find food. You found it. So I don't know what the fuck your problem is. Catherine says, because you didn't have to take him hostage. Owen says, well, I could kill him if you like. Catherine says, what are you going to do to him? Owen says, none of your concern. Now step back, stupid bitch. Catherine kind of pipes down, and then the men take the bag off Dave's head, and immediately Owen holds a pistol to Dave's throat and tells him, You stay quiet, don't say a word, and maybe you'll live today. Dave says, What are we doing? And Owen says, Shut up! Shut your fucking mouth! There's deadheads all around these parts, and you keep running your fucking mouth, and they'll hear us. They'll be right on our asses. Dave says, Well, then you should shut that yap of yours. Owen says, Let's get one thing straight. I'm in charge here. I'm leading this hunt, and if you got something to say to me, take it up with my boss. And he pushes Dave forward and says, keep moving. As we see, Catherine looks like she feels bad for Dave. We then see a few dozen deadheads come out of the woods and Owen says to one of his guys, watch them, the rest of you with me. We see them run down and kill all of these deadheads with their knives. We see Catherine taking out a few, and one of the soldiers is telling her, you're getting better. As they're killing a bunch of the deadheads, we see Dave watching this from a distance. We see the soldier behind Dave, and Dave looks nervous, but then... Dave quickly headbutts the soldier from behind, and he falls. Dave then sees his chance and runs into the woods, but Owen sees him run away from far and says, go find that son of a bitch, now! Dave is running through the woods and he manages to get himself untied from the rope and he then sees more deadheads are now following him in the woods. Dave runs from the dead and we see him run out to the main road. Dave is out of breath and he sees down the road there is a huge military truck. He looks worried and then we see the truck starts up and starts driving after him. 
Dave tries to run as fast as he can, but after a while, the truck catches up to him. Dave stops and falls to his knees, all tired, and says, All right, you win. And we then see the truck door open. Someone steps out of the truck and walks up to Dave with his men, and Dave says, If you're gonna kill me, just get it over with. And the soldier says, Why would a father kill his own son? It's Dave's father, Paul. We see Dave hug him and he starts to cry and he says, Dad, <laughs> my father lost you. Are you, are you? I'm, I'm good, son, he says. And we see the two of them hug and Dave has a big smile on his face as we see Owen and the other soldiers lower their guns. Currently, as Dave tells Lincoln the story, Dave says, I remember when I saw him. I couldn't believe it. And Lincoln asks, So when your father saw you, what did Owen do? Dave says, My dad told him to put their weapons down. And that's what they did. And then they brought me here. Flashback to three months ago. We see them riding into the town and Dave and Paul are walking the streets and Dave says, this is pretty impressive, dad. How long has this place been here? Paul says, it's actually been a year as of today. A lot of the military got killed during the fall. Some stayed with their families. Others were going to safe places that people were trying to set up around the area. But our boss, Wesley, wanted us to kill everyone on sight. Things were about to go really bad, and we all knew it. So I took the people I could. And after a while, we found this place. And a few weeks after the fall, we found this place. And it took a while, but we turned this place into what it is now. Dave asks, does it have a name? Paul says, yes, it's called Kingstonville. Dave says, well, it's a great place, Dad. It's like the world before. And Paul says, we have a little gathering tonight to celebrate the last year in this place. If you don't mind coming, I would love to introduce my boy to the people. Dave says, I'll think about it. Paul says, I'm so glad you're here. And Dave says, me too, Dad. Paul says, hey, I heard about Linda and my granddaughter. Dave says, you did? Paul says, I heard it over the news. I was trying to get down there to talk to you. But, son, the world fell, and it fell so fast. But I want you to know I would have been there for you. Dave says, yeah, Dad. I'd, I'd rather just not talk about it, you know? Paul says, well, son, why don't you come over for a drink later? We can catch up a bit before we go to the gathering. Dave has a smile on his face and says, I'd love that, Dad. And Paul says, all right, son. Well, make yourself at home. The sun is starting to set. Dave is walking the streets and we see people all dressed up on the way to the gathering they're having. And Dave walks past Owen and Owen walks past him and says, looks like daddy came to the rescue. And Dave turns around and says, excuse me? Owen says, oh what? You want me to kiss your ass just because you're Paul's son? Let me tell you something. I've been in the military for many years, son. And the people always tell me I have a really good judge of character. And I see you. Pal. And Dave says, you don't know anything about me. Owen says, oh, I do. I have stared into the worst and most heartless murderer's eyes, and I know when people are holding things back. You don't fool me for one minute, Mr. Miller. And I know that the devil is calling for you. And there's only a matter of time before everyone knows who you truly are. Because silence can pose a greater threat than the difficult truth. And Dave looks at him directly in the eyes and says, well, what doesn't kill me might make me kill you. And Dave slowly walks away and Owen says, yeah, enjoy the party. And Dave says, oh, I will. And he has a big smirk on his face as he walks away.
We see Paul getting ready for his gathering, and he hears a knock at the door. He opens up the door and we see three military guys show up at the door, and one of them is Roger, and they all have beers, and one of the men says, Hey boss, we are on our way to the party. We figured we'd stop for a drink. And they give a beer to Paul, and then we see Dave walk in, and Paul says, Hey son, everyone, this is my son Dave. Roger shakes his hand and says, It is great to finally meet you, Mr. Miller. Your father has told us great things about you. Dave says, well, it goes both ways. Roger says, it sure does. You know, your father is the reason I'm standing here right now talking to you today. Our last tour in Afghanistan. Your father saved my life about four times. All just to make sure I got back home to my family. Dave says, yeah, I always wanted to be like him when I was little. Paul says, hey everyone, take a seat. We still got a little bit till the party starts. Dave sits down with all the guys and one of the guys gives him a beer and Dave says, nah man, I'm good. And the guy says, oh, come on. When was the last time you had a beer? They're cold. Dave then gives in and says, all right, and he cracks it open. Roger says to the guys, oh, and by the way, if anyone asks Owen where his beers are, tell him we brought some for the party, okay? Dave asks, and Owen is, Roger says, oh, he's my little brother. He's a bit rough around the edges, but when you get to know him, you'll be fine. Your father here says that in a few years, he may finally retire and give the place to him. Paul says, well, I said it's a thought. And Roger asks, so Dave, what kind of crazy adventures you've been through since the world went down the drain? Dave says, ah, nah, fellas, you don't really want to know. And Roger says, hey, we're all adults here. Dave says, well, if you want the brutal truth, since the world fell, I've been hunting down the guy that murdered my wife and daughter. And about three weeks ago, I killed him. Paul looks at Dave and says, wait, you actually took him down? Dave says, yeah, with the help of some people. And Paul asks, who are these people that helped you? Dave says, an innocent family man that deserved to kill him just as much as I did. Roger says, so your friends, are they still alive? Dave says, I think so. But after I killed him, I left. I wanted a fresh start for myself, you know? Roger says, well, good for you. You took responsibility. I gotta ask, did it feel any different? You know, when you killed him? Dave says, I thought it would, but I don't. And Roger says, well, I feel for you, brother. The world can be cruel. And Dave says, but enough about me. What about you fellas? Roger says, well, we were all in the city when everything was happening, but it all happened very fast. It was normal and then I swear not even one day later, it was quiet nothing left of the world. And because of your father here, he gave us the courage to keep going. And I know it may seem like we got lucky, but we weren't there for a while. But now we've got a safe place to live in. And you're a part of that, my friend. And Paul says, all right, it's almost time. We should get to the party. And everyone gets up and Roger shakes Dave's hand again and says, we're honored to have you here, Dave. And Dave thanks him. And Dave, Paul, Roger, and the other guys head over to the party. We cut to the gathering. We see everyone talking and having a good time. Dave is walking around and he just looks a little scared seeing something like this. And he starts to walk towards the exit. But then we then hear someone saying, you're missing all the fun. Dave turns around to see Catherine. Dave says, I, uh, I don't know if this is exactly my thing. Catherine asks, I wanted to see you. Are you okay? I know today was probably the craziest day of your life. Dave laughs a little bit and says, huh, I got my father back and I'm in clean clothes. This was a good day. And he sees Owen and he's got a date with him and they walk in and Dave looks at Catherine and says, yeah, today was a good day. Catherine says, well, is there anything I can get for you? Dave says, I got one. Do you ever stop asking questions? Catherine smiles a little bit and says, well, what can I say, Dave Miller? You're a very complex individual. You always got something about you I wanna know about. And Dave is about to say something and Roger taps Dave on the shoulder and says, your dad wants you on stage. Dave says, all right. And Dave walks away and after that conversation, he now looks a little bit more confident. We then see Paul get up on stage and the crowd cheers for him.
Paul gets up and says, Well, it's been a year, and I'm glad that we're all gathered here today to celebrate the first of many years this place will have. I also want to thank every last one of you tonight for not giving up, not just stopping, but we believed. And now because of that, we are standing here right now and for many years to come. And he then says, and now I would love to introduce to all y'all my son, Dave Miller. Dave gets on stage and says, well, thank you for all having me. It's amazing to be able to see a room full of people like this again. And I want to say a big thanks to all of you people for making my dad believe and give him the motivation to keep going after all this time. Thank you for giving me a new life and a new home. And the crowd cheers for him and Dave comes off the stage. Catherine says, see, they already love you. Dave says, well, you technically brought me here. So Catherine says, so I got to ask. What did you do before the fall? Dave says, well, I, uh... We then hear a huge explosion from outside. Everyone runs outside. You see the people are all getting shot in the streets. We then see it's the Vipers. They start killing a bunch of the residents and everyone is running for their lives. We see the guard was killed and the gate is wide open. Dave and Roger shut the gate together and Roger says, come with me, we gotta get to the armory. Some soldiers run to the armory and they all get as many guns as they can and then they start fighting back. We see the Vipers slaughtering everyone in the streets. Then all of a sudden the military start killing a bunch of these Vipers. Roger gives Dave a gun and says, you find one, you kill. Don't let them get away. Now go! The military split off from Dave. They kill as many Vipers as they can. Meanwhile, Dave is running through the streets and he shoots one of them. But then there is so much smoke that Dave can barely see what's in front of him. But when the smoke starts to leave, he sees... Miles from the top of the hill. Dave sees him, but Miles doesn't. Dave is in shock, but then Roger and his guys fire at him and Miles runs away with 20 other Vipers and most of them make it out. Dave tries to run after Miles, but as he sees them run away, Dave stops himself a little bit and lets Miles get away. We then see Dave walk up to Roger and he says, most are dead, but a few got away. And Roger says, let's go check on your dad. We see a viper on the ground and Paul has a gun clicked to his head and he says, you think you won, don't you? Dave and Roger walk up behind him and Dave asks, is this the last one? Paul says, only within our walls. And he shoots the last viper and spits on him out of anger. And Dave looks around at all of the dead bodies in the streets, and everyone just looks completely speechless. The next day. They're all burying all of the residents that got murdered by the Vipers last night. Paul is crying and looks super angry. We see everyone throw some dirt on the graves and then everyone walks away. We see Dave walk past Catherine and he kind of gives her a nod. Dave then goes to talk to Paul. It's now been a few hours. We see Paul drinking and we hear a knock at the door and he says, come in. Dave comes in and asks, dad, we haven't seen you all day. The people out there are scared. They want answers for this. Paul says, well, what are you looking at me for? Dave says, because you're their leader, dad. Paul says, no, no, I am not. I've been feeding these people bullshit. Thing is, 
I was also bullshitting myself. I told everyone that this was a safe place, that we could live here forever. I promised them that they would never have to lose again. Dave says, this place is still standing. We fought like hell to save this place last night. Paul says, we did. But I can't just sit here and wait for them to show their faces here again. I risked my life in several wars, several times to save people that got murdered last night. And I couldn't save them now. Paul gets up and says, I'm taking Roger and some of my men, and we're not coming back till they're all dead. Dave looks worried and says, Dad, I need you to listen to me, okay? You're not thinking straight, okay? This rage, it'll kill you. Paul says, how did you feel when Chris killed Linda? Dave says, don't drag them into this. Paul says, you're not gonna tell me, so let me remind you. You wanted to strangle him until he died. And no matter what anyone told you, no one could ever stop you from doing what you did. You got your justice. Now I'm getting mine. Paul walks out and Dave says, Dad! And Paul walks away. The sun has set and Dave is walking the street smoking a cigarette. And he puts it out and then goes and knocks on someone's door. Catherine answers the door and Dave says, Oh, sorry, did I wake you? Catherine says, Oh, it's okay. I've been asleep most of the day. Come on in. Dave sits down and says, My dad left. He took Roger and some others with him. Catherine says, What? Why would they just leave? Dave says, Believe me, I did everything I could to get him to stay. But he wouldn't stop. Catherine says, Did he say he was coming back? Dave says, He wouldn't even talk to me. Catherine hugs him and says, I'm sorry. We all spent the past year hiding from our fears. Now, I'm afraid it's time to face them. Dave says, I just feel like something's coming, and I know it's going to be bad. Catherine says, well, you don't look so good. Dave says, yeah, I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. And Catherine says, all right, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make you something to eat, and we can talk. Just the most important thing right now, don't do anything rash, okay? Dave nods his head, and then she goes over to the kitchen to make him something. And Dave is just sitting on the couch and looks nervous after everything that just happened. Outside the walls, about 10 miles out. We see Paul, Roger, and a few other soldiers are walking through the woods, and then one of them is looking out into the distance, and Paul says, They can't be far. They then see some footprints, and Roger says, This could definitely be some kind of lead. And Paul says, Let's keep moving. We aren't going home until the rest of these murderers are dead. We then hear a voice over the walkie say, You looking for something? Paul picks up the walkie and asks, Who is this? We reveal it's Lindsay, and she says, Call me Lindsay, and you are the son of a bitch who murdered my people last night. Paul looks angry and responds, Your people came into our home and murdered innocent people for nothing. Lindsay says, Yeah, I know. I must say I'm sorry. Sorry we didn't kill all of you. That one's on me. And Paul says, I'm afraid we aren't leaving until we get justice, ma'am. And Lindsay says, Oh, you don't have to worry about a thing, soldier. Your people are right where you need to be. And the soldiers all look a bit nervous and Paul asks, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Lindsay doesn't answer and then Roger says, uh, sir? Paul and the other soldiers see a couple dozen vipers surrounding them from every direction. We then see Lindsay smiling as we hear gunshots over the walkie talkie.
back at Kingstonville. We see Dave eating rather quickly and Catherine notices this and Dave thanks her and she says, of course. And then we hear the guard at the gate yelling, they're back. Dave and Catherine run out to the front gate and only to see just Roger barely on his feet and covered in blood and shaking. Owen runs to his brother and asks, what the hell happened? Roger says, we tried to stop them and they, he spits out some blood and Dave says, where is my father? Roger says, we, we, we got ambushed. And they came and we, we couldn't. Owen and the residents all look scared and Dave looks terrified and walks up to Owen and says, give me your keys. Owen says, if you think you're going anywhere with my car, you're sadly miss." Dave says, hand them over or your face is going to be nothing but mush. Now give me your fucking keys. And Owen gives him the keys and Dave is getting in a car and Catherine says, Dave, you can't go out there. It's too dangerous. And Dave says, I'll be back soon. No one leaves till I'm back. And Dave drives out to go find his father. Dave is driving in the car and looks terrified. He stops and sees the military truck parked on the side of the road. He checks near the truck and he sees footprints that go into the woods. Dave pulls out his gun and walks into the forest. He walks through the woods and as he keeps walking, we see the tracks go up the hill. Dave walks up the hill and we then see blood in the grass and snow. Dave looks ahead and sees all of the soldiers have been killed and are all laying there dead. Dave looks horrified and is yelling, Dad! He's running through in a panic and then we hear someone choking on their own blood and we see Paul is on the ground and he's suffering. Dave runs to his father and we hear him trying to talk, but he can't even barely speak anymore. Dave is crying and saying, no, 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 no. We see him bleeding out and Dave says, dad, no, 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 I'm gonna get you out of here. Come on. And he then sees all the gunshots in him and he knows how much blood is coming out of his ripped up stomach. Dave realizes he can't save his father and he can only watch him die. And Dave holds him in his arms as he's suffering and tells him, Dad, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he's holding him and tells him, I will finish your fight. I promise you, Dad. We see Paul starting to hold his hand and Paul says, Don't ever, don't ever change who you are, son. Don't ever let this consume you. Ever, son. The best, the best revenge is to never be like your enemy. And we see him take a few more breaths and then he dies in Dave's arms. Dave is breaking down and he screams in pain. He arrives back at Kingstonville. We see everyone run up to him as he reveals Paul's dead body to everyone. 
and Roger and the rest all look speechless, and Catherine tries to talk to Dave, but Dave says, just let me be. And he walks away and down the street as we see everyone reacting to this. One hour later. Dave is sitting in his apartment crying and we hear a knock at the door. He says, go away. We hear another knock at the door and he says, I said go away. Catherine then opens the door revealing it's her and she says, please, I wanted to check on you. And she tries to hug him, but he takes her off of him and says, I should have been there. I should have, I should have, I should have. He starts to cry and says, all my life, my father always kept leaving me. I never wanted him to go. I never wanted him to leave. Catherine says, it's hard for a lot of kids to say goodbye to their fathers like that. Dave says, no, because I'd be stuck at home with my mom. My mom would always be knocked out on whatever drugs she'd have on her. If it wasn't drugs, it was alcohol. Till one night, she overdosed. I was only six years old. I just thought my mom was asleep. It's not like it was unusual. Yeah, asleep for three weeks. And as the days would go by, I would just watch her body rot. Till my dad came through the door. I was just in my room playing with my toys and for the first time in my life, I saw my father cry. And I never felt so horrible in all my life. After she passed, me and my dad moved to DC. Never looking back. I practically never left his side for that first year. Then I met this girl in school. Her name was Linda. She was my best friend for years. And then she was more. I finally got that family that I never got to have growing up. Till some heartless piece of shit took that away. I lost my little girl. And the only thing that kept me going was knowing I was gonna give that son of a bitch what he deserved. After I killed him, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go on anymore. I would lay awake at night wondering sometimes, is this my last one? Then I met a stranger who needed my help, and I took it as a sign. Catherine hugs him and Dave holds her and says, and now the last piece of family that I had left is gone. And Catherine hugs him and says, it's okay. As he's crying his eyes out, he's starting to have trouble breathing from crying so hard. And Catherine says, hey, hey, breathe. Can you do that for me? Dave says, what are we gonna do? Now Owen's gonna be leading this place. My father was right, this place is as good as gone. Catherine says, it doesn't have to be. There's gotta be a way. Someone can lead us through this. Dave looks at her and says, Kath, go home. She says, all right, I'm sorry for coming. I'll let you be. And she walks out and Dave walks back in and loads his gun. He takes a huge swig of liquor and he puts his gun in his holster. He puts his hat on and he walks out of his house. Dave knocks on Owen's door and he opens up the door and says, what the fuck do you want, Dave? Dave says, I saw something. You're the only person now that I can report to, so. Owen says, what's going on? Dave says, when I was coming back, a couple of those people followed me. Only looked like a few, but they were outside just waiting to attack us again tonight. But the people have been through enough. They've been through way too much, and I don't want to scare anyone more than they already are, so I'm asking you. I know the guard shift changes in 20 minutes. When it does, I need your help taking out these few stragglers before they kill more of us tonight. And Owen says, and why would I do something for you? Dave says, you're not doing it for me. Hell, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it so these people don't get killed in their sleep tonight. You told me you fought in many wars and won many fights, and if you're gonna lead this place in my dad's memory, this is how you'll get the respect from these people. Owen says, fuck. 
Fine. Meet me at the gate in 20. And Dave says, you got it. Dave and Owen are walking through the woods, and it's very quiet, and Owen says, So you said you saw them? Dave says, Yeah, they were following me back. I knew they were there, but I didn't want to take them on. Didn't want to risk it. Owen says, Yeah. So you plan on sticking around? Now that your father's gone, I figured you'd run. Dave says, No. My dad would want me to stay, and besides, someone's got to keep this place going. Owen says, And you think I can't? Dave says, I didn't say that. And Owen laughs at him and walks forward a bit and says, <laughs> I don't get you, man. You feel like you got something to prove, then why are we out here looking for them? Dave says, because we're not. Dave pulls out his gun and points it towards Owen, and he turns around and looks pissed and says, And there's the man I knew was in there all along. Dave says, You got something to say to me? Go ahead. Say it. It'll be the last words you'll ever say. Owen says, Why are you doing this? Dave says, Oh, now you want to talk? Owen says, I brought you here. I could have killed you back in that camp. Dave says, maybe you should have. You've threatened me several times. Accused me of being someone that you didn't even know. And I'll tell you what, I'm guilty of the same goddamn thing. I accuse someone of being someone they're not. And guess what? That man saved my life and I saved his. Owen says, you're going to pay the price for this. I promise you that. Dave says, oh, I have. Truth of the matter is, I've been paying the price all my fucking life. And everyone stands there and acts like they have the right to judge me when everyone's doing the same thing I'm doing. Survive it. Owen looks pissed and Dave says, And there's one thing I've learned. The bad guys always win. And Owen tries to say something and Dave says, Shut up. Shut your fucking mouth. Owen laughs and says, you're not going to kill me, because if you were, you would have done it by now. So you do what you're going to do. And he shoots Owen in the head and ends his life. But then, we see Catherine steps out of the woods and says, Dave? We see she followed them, and she's now looking at Dave in fear. Dave looks at her, and he's covered in blood, and Dave holds on to his gun as Catherine looks a bit scared of him. And Dave doesn't look sure if she's about to try something. And she looks at him and asks, So what do we do with him? Dave lowers his gun when hearing that and says, help me get him into the river. Dave and Catherine put his body into the river and let him drown. And Dave looks at her and says, all right, here's the story. It's now the next day. Dave, Roger, Catherine, and the rest of the residents are all burying Paul and the other soldiers. And Roger is crying and Dave is telling him, me and Catherine tried to stop him, but he wouldn't stop. He wanted it to be him. He wanted it to be him that killed them. He wanted to kill every last one of them for what they did to my father, for what they did to this place. When me and Catherine found him, there was nothing left. I want you to know we did everything we could to stop him. Roger says, I know you did. Thank you. And Dave hugs Roger and says, it's okay. And Dave says, it looks like these people are yours now. And Roger says, no, no, I can't lead these people like this. It's not me. Dave says, well, who else we got? 
Roger says, I'm starting to think it's not a mistake my brother brought you here. And these people would love to have someone as capable as your father was to lead this place. You've saved these people several times. The people trust you. All the things you've done to kill the broken man that killed your family. I've talked to the residents and you're exactly what these people need. What do you say, Mr. Miller? Two months later. We see Kingstonville is thriving and looks better than ever before. Dave is talking with Roger and some other soldiers and is saying, be back soon. Check the roads on the map. Roger says, you got it boss. And Dave says, be safe out there. And Roger says, we will. Let's roll out. And we see Roger and a group of soldiers leave to try to track down the Vipers. As we can see, they've been looking for the Vipers for a while. We see him walking past Catherine in the streets and he says, last night was fun. Catherine says, it was. Want to do it again? Dave says, yep, see you then. And Dave walks away looking the happiest we've seen him before. Outside of Kingstonville, we see Roger and the military soldiers driving and Roger says, it's getting light. We should probably go home. All those gunshots and explosions can't be good. Another soldier says, we got to make sure it's not them. The boss told us to make sure no vipers get anywhere near home. Roger says, we should still update everyone just in case. The soldier says, yeah, you're right. Tell the boss we're coming back. Roger says, you got it. As he picks up his walkie and then they hear church bells ringing as the timelines have connected. Currently, as Dave tells Lincoln the end of the story, Lincoln takes the last sip of his drink and says, so all these people are yours? Dave says, they are. And with your people in mind, we would have an army. Quite literally. Lincoln laughs a bit and says, so our deal still stands? Dave is about to answer, and then they hear Derek from outside say, they're back. We see Lincoln and Dave come out and run to the front gate, and Roger steps out and tells Dave, we found them. A group of them at least. We took out all we could. Dave says, good job. And Roger says, but more importantly, we found out something while we were out there. Dave asks, what? As we see the family step out of the trucks and Roger looks at Dave and says, we're not the only ones they're trying to kill. And we then see Haley steps out and says, Lincoln? Haley hugs Lincoln and he asks her if she's okay and she doesn't answer and Lincoln says, what is it? Haley says, the ranch is gone. Lincoln says, what? D did everyone get out okay? Blake comes out and says, a lot didn't make it, but thanks to her, a lot of us are alive. And Lincoln hugs her and Roger asks, wait, 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 who's this? Haley says, it's my husband. Roger looks kind of suspicious now, and Dave tells him, It's all right, Roger. They're okay. And Roger says, All right. And Dave says, Well, it looks like you just found us just in time. Lincoln says, What do you mean? Dave says, Well, it appears like we all want the same thing here. And me and Mr. West have made an agreement. All of his people are welcome. And we see Tom in the background hears him say this and looks angry and he walks down the street and we see Catherine walks up to Dave and asks, who are these people, babe? Dave looks at Lincoln and says, old friends. And Dave says, this is Lincoln West and his people. And Catherine says, well, come on in. Let's get you guys settled. The next day, we see the sunrise and we see Dave standing over Paul's grave. He then starts crying.
we see Tom walk up and says, fear, regret, pain? Oh, wait a sec. You don't feel any of those things. Dave says, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason your friends are probably even alive is all because of me. Tom says, well, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason why my friend is laying in the dirt is because of you. Or the reason your father is laying here dead is because of you. In that case, we agree. It is because of you. Dave says, I'm right here. You feel like you want to beat my face some more? You go right ahead. I've got nothing to lose anyway. Tom says, all the things you do to people. All the horrible things you do just so these people feel sorry for you. Dave says, these people are following me because I'm going to give them the revenge they deserve to get. Tom says, ah, so that's what you're telling them. Tom says, well, well, well. It would be so hard to do that if there were no Mr. Miller around. We see Dave has his hand on his gun and Tom says, but maybe. If the people are lucky enough, Paul may not have to be the only Miller they'll have to lose. And Tom walks away, and Dave looks like he wants to take out his gun, but he stops himself and gets his hands off his gun. In Lincoln and Haley's new apartment, we see everyone's in clean clothes and they're all talking around the table. Lincoln, Haley, Tom, Sydney, Luke, Kezia, and Blake. And Lincoln says, we almost died out there yesterday. Our home is gone. I don't like this either, but we have a roof over our head, full stomachs, clean clothes, and more importantly, we're all together. And Haley says, most of us. And Lincoln says, yeah. Look, this war is about to get worse than ever before. And we're so close. This is almost done. And mark my words when I say, Lindsay's gonna get what she deserves. Tom says, you think these people will help us do that? Lincoln says, we're all gonna have to make it work. And Tom asks, well, these soldiers lost against these people once. What says they're not gonna lose again? Lincoln says, if they do, and if Dave can't do it, then this place will be ours. The next night. We see Dave is trying to sleep, but he can't. He walks outside and tells the guard, going for a walk. He walks outside the walls just to get out for a bit. He pulls out a smoke and we see him just standing there smoking, but then he hears the sound of twigs snapping and Dave pulls out his gun and says, someone there? We don't hear anything and Dave says, holy fuck, I really need to get some sleep. We see him smoking and then he starts walking back and we see Miles comes out of the woods and says, can I have one? But I don't remember when And every time we get to where we're entering I feel my beliefs and hope surrendering But I know I'll be coming home soon Yes, I know I'll be coming home soon Like the enemies that we are battling I am nothing but a human alien Left with nothing else but to keep wandering